Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you on this uh, Sunday morning. Uh, nice fall Sunday morning. Would like to call your attention just to a few of the announcements in the bulletin. Today is All Saints Day. Today is a day where we remember our saints that have passed away since last All Saints Day, so we'll do that during the communion service. This afternoon we have an all church uh, meeting. Um, I don't know if Cal wants to say anything about that. I'm not sure where Cal's at. I know he's here. It's at 2 o'clock. Okay, maybe if he wants to say something when he comes back in, he's ringing the bell. Cal, did you want to say anything about this afternoon's meeting? Okay, so um, bring your questions, and hopefully we have some answers for you for um, looking at um, space for our, our congregation. So uh, everyone is welcome to come to that. Our missions committee will be meeting um, Monday at five and then we'll have our one board meeting at six. So keep that in mind. On Tuesday, we'll have a Zoom uh, Bible study. You, anyone is welcome to join that. Your, the link to that to join is in your uh, news blast. So please join us if you can. Also on Wednesday at 6.30 is our worship committee meeting and it is also going to be on zoom so keep that in mind if you're on worship you should um, get that um, link um, sometime if you haven't already um, dad's uh, bagel waffles are this are today um, from 12 to 12 30 so if you want to have lunch you can have bagels or Belgian waffles for for breakfast I think Barb's gonna come up and speak to us about our shop on state I just wanted everyone to know that there's an opportunity to help out at Shop on State this Friday. She said to come between 8.30 and 9, and we'll probably work till noon, but you can come and just work an hour or so if you want. We'll get a, put out Christmas trees, 
and they have another room that they're clearing out so they can try and get some of the excess donations off the stair steps. And I checked on the figures in this last grant cycle. They gave $91,671.52 back into Mitchell County for people that uh, had requested grant money to assist in different projects. And their total since they opened is over $747,000 that the shop has generated funds back to help the county. If you're interested in coming, uh, you can come without letting me know, but it would be nice to let me know so I can give Carol an idea how many people are gonna come. Thanks. Oh, and I was also gonna say, at the beginning, they were talking about the International Day in Cresco. If you were planning on going, it said from noon till six, but from noon till three, the students will be going through. So if you'd like to avoid all that activity, I would go after three o'clock. Are there any other announcements that should be announced that we may have missed or overlooked? Anything else? And So your son ran for city council, and he won Minneapolis. In Minneapolis, so wonderful. And it was his birthday, too. What a great birthday present. So congratulations to him. That's Elliot, right? OK. Any other announcements? If not, let us stand and uh, greet one another in the name of Christ by waving to one another from our pews. Let's enter into worship with a moment of meditation. Be still and know God is God. Be still and know God is. Be still and know God. Be still and know. <coughs> Be still. Be. Please join me in the call to worship. The earth and all that is in it belongs to the Holy One. This is the Holy One for whom we have waited. Who shall ascend the hill of the Holy One, and who shall stand in this holy place? Please join me in the opening prayer. Faithful Redeemer, you are the beginning and the ending of all things. You promise to wipe away every tear that death and mourning will be no more. You make our home among us and abide with us as our God. Teach us to live as the saints you call us to be, that we may truly be your people, living and doing your will. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, amen. Opening hymn is Shall We Gather at the River, number 723. <laughs>
The New Testament reading this morning is Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 6a. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He, was, he who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega and the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Gospel reading this morning is John chapter 11, verses 32 through 44. Please stand if you're able. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you have, had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead, dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there for four days. Then Jesus said, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Thus ends the reading of the word. Let us bow our heads in prayer. O gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. Have you ever tried to figure out what to say when someone close to you is experiencing grief? And then you can um, you kind of struggle with that a little bit sometimes. Our human instinct is often to try to fix the problem, so we say, empty um, things like we might say it's God's will or, or and that's not really all that helpful sometimes and it's he's in a better place they might say. I remember when my when my brother died he was um, 43 when he died of cancer and someone came up to me and said well they need young people in heaven too. That's not always helpful and it definitely wasn't helpful to me when that was said to me. Sometimes people just need some time to cry with, with them, someone to cry with them, to know that their sorrow uh, moves you because you care about them. Nobody knows how to fix that kind of loss, and it's okay to say so and to say nothing, to just be present with the grieving person. The scripture um, this morning shows us the need for us to be compassionate in the way that Jesus was compassionate and we can live well because of the hope we find in Jesus. Today and today is All Saints Day. Today is a day that we remember those in our, our church that have, have passed on. It's 
the day we remember those who serve God on earth and have entered their eternal home. We miss each, that have, each one of those that have passed from this life into the life that Christ promised to us. But it's not a day of sorrow, but it's a day of gladness, for we know that because Christ lives, we too shall live with the company of all those who are part of the family of Christ. We will grieve for those who have gone, and Christ, uh, and Christ does not tell us not to grieve. In fact, it is a natural part of what we do. But we're not to grieve like the rest of the world who has no hope. Philip Yancey, in his book, The Jesus I Never Knew, tells us that there are Christians from a certain part of Africa who never say that they're dead, say of their dead, that they have lost that person, like they may say, I lost my wife last spring. We don't, they don't say that. That seeing, that seeing death from our perspective, but, but from the African folks' view, death from God's perspective. Indeed, they announce with joy that their loved ones have arrived in heaven. They're not lost at all. They know exactly where they are. They are in heaven with God. Do not grieve like those who have no hope. In today's scripture, we meet, we meet with three of Jesus' closest friends, Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha. And Jesus spent a lot of time in their home and was good friends with them. He would stop to visit with Mary and Martha and Lazarus whenever he passed through their community. They had shared many enjoyable evenings together. These three people were dear friends of Jesus, and he cared for them a great deal. And one day, Jesus was teaching in Bethany, where, near where Mar Mary and Martha and Lazarus resided. When word came to, to him that Lazarus was sick and he would probably die, Lord, whom you love, is ill, they tell him. Certainly, Jesus would come at once to the aid of a sick friend, wouldn't he? And Jesus was Lazarus' last hope, and Jesus had healed other people from their illnesses, surely he would want to heal his friend from whatever his illness was. But as you know, that's not exactly the way things worked out. Instead of going at once to Lazarus, Jesus stayed where he was for two more days. What does that make, what, what doesn't make sense is that Jesus was only a few miles away and Mar from Mary and Martha's home. He could have made the trip in a little time. Instead, he stays where he is for two more days. Now let me ask you, how would you feel if a loved one went into the emergency room of a hospital and had to wait 48 hours for a doctor to show up and treat you? You would be outraged, wouldn't you? How would you feel if a loved one died while waiting those two days for the doctor? My guess is you would be more than outraged. You'd probably want to sue the hospital. We read that, I'll read that when Jesus heard that Lazarus was ill, he said, the sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. What did he mean by that? What, it, what he meant was something magnificent, as, as we know, but by the time Jesus finally made his way to the home of Mary and Martha, their brother was already dead. When Martha heard that Jesus was approaching, she went rushing to meet him. His first words to Jesus were, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And that's quite a statement of faith for Martha to make. Jesus is assured her your brother will rise again and Martha agreed with Jesus thinking he meant that Lazarus would rise on the last day and Jesus replied I am the resurrection and the life those who believe in me even though they die will live and whoever lives and believes in me will never die and Jesus asked Martha if she believed what he told her and Martha replied yes Lord so Martha went back home apparently not expecting anything to come from their conversation with Jesus and Martha told her sister Mary and the, that the teacher is here and calling for you. And Mary got up and once and ran to the house and met Jesus. And Mary found Jesus at the same place her sister had left her. And she knelt down at the feet and repeated what her sister had said. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Mary was grieving uncontrollably over her brother's death. And the people who followed her 
out to meet Jesus also began to weeping and wailing. And here we have one of the most beautiful scenes in the scripture. Jesus tells us when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they tell him. And John writes, Jesus wept. And then the Jews said, see how he loved him. We all know that Jesus wept is the shortest verse in the Bible. We, do we understand that this is also one of the most powerful verses in the Bible? Let me ask you a question. What does John show us as a weeping Jesus? It's a good question. However, I believe most uh, people are greatly impressed by the weeping Jesus. We may have snickered as children when we, at, we were asked to re recite a Bible verse and memorize a Bible verse, and we chose the shortest Bible verse in the Bible, which is Jesus wept. But we also um, have learned the prize of this verse. I think this shows the human side of Jesus. Weeping shows Jesus' human side so that those of us who have hurt so badly at times in our lives, so the tears are also flow identify with him. Anybody who has ever been hurt knows what it is to cry unless we are one of those sad people who have learned to, to smother any shy, signs of emotions or show any kind of emotions, and that's a very unhealthy practice. We live in a world in which crying is sometimes seen as weakness, and weakness is not to be tolerated, but even Jesus wept. Tears are a natural, healthy response to a deep hurt. Many of us have shed tears in the passing of loved ones. We, are, we all weep for different reasons. Don't you suppose that it was healing for some witnesses in the crowd mourning Lazarus' death when they saw that Jesus uh, breaks down and weeps as well? See how he loved him. And Jesus did love Lazarus. Just as he loves you and me, his tears are a reminder of the human side of Jesus and his love for all of God's children. Jesus' tears show us how he's able to relate to our experiences when we lose someone we can we care about deeply. It hurts when we stand by the grave of someone that we love. We can all learn from this. We, can, we are so, so used to asking ourselves what Jesus would do when we are faced with a moral dilemma, but, what, but when we are deciding how to react to a potential emotional situation, do we ask the same question, how would Jesus handle that? And we do in this scripture, we see it, Jesus wept. Jesus was moved with compassion to the point of flowing tears for those who were hurting, and he didn't care who saw him do it. Jesus taught us that it is right to shed tears. It is all right to cry and weep when you hurt. Be more like Jesus. Show your emotions and be compassionate no matter who is watching you. Jesus tears tears are not only show us his human side, but they also tell us that Jesus knows how, how sad we are when we lose someone that we love. That's a good thing to remember as we celebrate All Saints Day. We grieve for them, but not as those who have no hope. We know who they are. We, we haven't lost them. We know where they're at. We simply await the day when we will be united with them in our eternal home. See, there's always hope when you know Jesus. Martha and, and Martha says to, to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus replies by saying, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And Jesus went to the tomb where his friend Lazarus lay buried, asked for the stone to be removed, and called Lazarus out of, out of death, out of the stench, of a body that had been laid there for four days, and Lazarus rose. As you and I live with our griefs, our hurts, our pains, Jesus says the same thing to us that God said so long ago in Psalms 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted 
in the earth. The story of Lazarus is a story of compassion, of hope, a story that says um, out of despair comes hope. All of us face discouragement in life, and at those times we need to turn to the Lord knowing that we can trust that he'll make a way, as he always does. The story of the raising of Lazarus gives us hope for the future. Jesus weeps for Lazarus, showing us that he understands the human condition of sorrow, sorrow and grief. But he also raises Lazarus, and he will raise us out of whatever pains us in our life, because the compassion of Jesus gives us the ultimate hope. us uh, sing our oh. let us uh, now come together as a community of faith to share with one another our, our joys and concerns so that we can be in prayer for this coming week for those uh, joys and concerns or the joys and concerns you'd like to share this morning So for Tracy, who, whose wife passed away um, last week, um, let's keep her in our prayers, or him in our prayers. What others? If not, let us bow our heads in silence. Gracious and loving God, we come to you with praise for all those of, of, of the days past, all those of our time now, and with whose hearts and lives we reflect your love and your truth. We thank you that the vision of those who have gone before us strive for the coming of your kingdom and do your will. I remember those who have dreamed dreams and hoped hopes and translated those dreams and hopes into Christian action. We especially hold in grateful memory those who were members of this church and assisted in its growth and strength of its service. Remember those who made this church a reality in their dreams, whose labors and dreams we have inherited. Today we bring our thanksgiving for those of our memberships who have died in this past year. Let this service of remembrance not be a cause of renewed sorrow, but rather an experience of joy and love for the gift of having known and served them. Renew, us with it, renew within us uh, the resurrection faith so that in our sorrow for the loss of their companionship, we realize we do not grieve with no hope. We grieve knowing that they are forever in your care and love. We rejoice they, they live in our hearts as well as in that eternal as Christians, we do not commemorate the, the death, but we celebrate the thrill of life that is a true. We pray all of this in the name of your Son and our Savior, who taught us this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. This time we'll take a few moments to prayerfully consider our gifts to God, as, and you may place them in the back of the sanctuary in the offering plate.
you join me in the prayer of dedication? Gracious giver of all that we need, accept these gifts of simple bread and ordinary wine. May they be one day shared in your holy peace, given out throughout the world. We pray in the name of Jesus our Lord. You set the table for all people, a table of rich Thanksgiving is also inserted in your bulletin and also will uh, be on the screen, I believe. We want to remind you that in United Methodist Church, we do practice open communion. That means you need not be a member of this church or of any church of any particular age. Christ our Lord invites all to come to the table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and martyrs, God of mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth, in all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of a suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. In the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread and gave it to disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit in us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all the saints, especially those whom we name before you. 
will also light a candle in their memory. Zella Marie Francis. Francis Margaret Morris. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever.
you join me in the prayer of thanksgiving? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn. into the world as a living body of Christ, bringing eternal life to all who seek God's face. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.